Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Oscar Romero Parish. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our scripture readings begin on page 227 in the Breaking Bread Missal on page 227. Our gathering hymn is number 208, Praise to the Lord. Hymn number 208. Please rise. <laughs>
a couple of weeks ago, but it may have missed uh, some folks. Because I was talking to a Christian of this week, um, and uh, she was, and not the first person, commenting on the inadequacy of the sound system. So, if you weren't aware, we are getting a brand new sound system. Now, and um, the good news is it's really state-of-the-art, it's really good, and it's the gift, it's the anonymous gift of a parishioner. They were here Wednesday. Um, the bad news is we won't make our goal of Christmas. Can tell you the supply chain, um, but they can't get the parts. They even tried doing some substitution. So hopefully as soon as possible in January. And uh, in a few weeks, on a Saturday afternoon, uh, they're going to come and set up, don't ask me how they do it, some sort of a demo. But um, from the that they and what we've heard, it's just, we're going to go from uh, 1960s technology to uh, technology. So uh, we'll keep folks updated on that. In the meantime, I appreciate your patience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. 
It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm, Psalm 16, You are my inheritance, O Lord. Suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O oh Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand. Forever, you are my inheritance, O oh, Lord. A reading from the letter of to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently these same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for his sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. strength to stand before the Son of Man. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky 
and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate the, um, as announced, the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And it's almost like a kind of a trick question, how many Sundays are there in Ordinary Time? And the answer is there's 34 Sundays in Ordinary Time, so you just, it's, uh, the reason there's not 52 is because we have the Sundays of Advent the Sundays of Lent and the Sundays of Easter, which are not ordinary time. But next Sunday, the last Sunday of ordinary time, we don't call the 34th Sunday of ordinary time, or at least have not for about the last 150 years, because that is the day on which we celebrate the feast day of Christ the King. So this penultimate Sunday in ordinary times is the Sunday every year on which the church focuses, as do our readings today, on what are called end times. The first reading comes from the book of Daniel. I happen to love, as many of us do, especially as a child, reading the book of Daniel because the early part of the book the biography part, if you will, was very interesting. And it gave us the story of Daniel being called into the king's court and Daniel's refusing to eat food that wasn't kosher and a Daniel standing up for his, um, his values, for his Jewish religious practices and his worship, and even the great story of Daniel removing the thorn from the lion's paw. But the end of the book, from which we hear today contains his prophetic vision, a vision of the end of the world. And it's not unlike some of the scenarios presented in the book of Revelation. In the gospel, Jesus also presents an end time image. And he repeats about the only detail that he consistently offers about end times. And that is, it will happen suddenly and everyone will be taken by surprise. Now, we know, and if you've spent any time with people who are a part of it, apocalyptic cults spend a lot of time and energy on this topic. We do not so-called uh, Catholics, um, uh, mainstream Protestants, and Orthodox, we instead focus on Jesus' practical advice. Be ready. That's what really matters, isn't it? That we're ready. Now, today's second reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews. And it contains a reference to the priest standing at his ministry offering sacrifice. That is not a reference to a priest like me. Instead, this is a reference to what's called the Levitical priesthood. 
the priesthood that was attained by, um, uh, by lineage to the descendants of Levi. That ancestral priesthood has been replaced by the perfect priesthood of Jesus Christ. And the sacrifice to which he refers in that letter is obviously the paschal sacrifice in which we share at every mass through our participation in the Eucharist. So we say that the Christian priesthood, the Catholic priesthood, the ordained priesthood is a completely different priesthood. It's the same word because it's the mediator of the sacrifice, but the priest in the Catholic ordained context is sharing, humbled, but given the grace to share in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His sacrifice replaced all sin offerings of the past. The priesthood of today, the priesthood in which I just said I participate, is a sharing in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. And so the priesthood in this context, instead of being the one who offers the sacrifice, instead leads the community in sharing the perfect sacrifice offered at the altar. An important aspect of the liturgical reform that followed the Second Vatican Council was restoring the priest to his role as leader of the community, the worshiping community, mediator in the sacrament, rather than having him be, if you will, the sole executioner, the sole performer of the great sacrifice offered at the altar. Speaking in a language, Latin, not understood by all, and facing away from the congregation didn't create an atmosphere or an environment in which it seemed that we were all sharing and in which the priest was acting more as leader and mediator rather than sole principal actor. It is important to understand that Vatican II and it's one of its important objectives and the liturgical reforms that flowed from it was to strengthen the role of the laity to re-emphasize the need for the people. The old model obviously limited the role and participation of the assembly. That's why we are encouraged to sing. That's why we have missiles and prayer cards so that together we can share, follow, and together pray the same words. Now this aspect of community is very essential and often overlooked. We are not a people that believes that salvation is strictly personal. We believe that community is an essential part of our building the kingdom. We do not come to Mass and pray as several hundred individuals. We pray together. We pray with and for one another. The community of believers needs also to be as strong outside the edifice of the church as it is when we're gathered together in prayer. The parish is the first what's called essential community of faith outside of the family. Ultimately, we as Catholics are part of a diocese and as part of the universal church. But we best get to know one another and to care about and for one another at the parish level. Despite fast and convenient means of transportation in our world that previous generations could never have even dreamed of. And despite rapid advancements in communication technology, sociologists tell us that growing numbers of people feel lonely and some even isolated. The good news 
is that we don't have to reinvent a model that stitches people together. We have it. It's the parish. Our challenge is to re-energize it and to reinvigorate it. Many of you may remember my pal, Father Dick Moran, who's come here sporadically and, and offered masses for a while. He spends most of his time in Florida. He's the definition of a fair weather friend. He comes and stays with me for a couple of months in the middle of summer when it's too hot down there. But you know that when he celebrated mass or when you spoke with him, he's a very engaging, vivacious um, uh, personality. But he talks a lot about how the parishes in Florida have succeeded, at least where he is, in creating vibrant social communities. And he gives the leaders and the members credit because he says many of these people have moved from other parts of the country. Yet by coming to a parish, they've made a home. And he really commends the way that many of these people who, even after they've lost a spouse, find companionship and support and the like in a parish. Now, he's referring primarily to a community of retired folks, but it does tell us that all models of parish are adaptable. Our challenge is to be creative. For centuries in this country, ethnic parishes helped new arrivals in America establish themselves while also building strong foundations of faith. It's sad to go into some of the East Coast's biggest cities and see these big, beautiful edifices close. But as Cardinal Sean likes to say, they did their job. Subsequent generations spoke primarily English, and many of them moved to the suburbs. So Polish and Lithuanian and Italian and other ethnic churches may now not be the vibrant centers of life they once were. But for at least a few generations, those parishes, by celebrating the native culture, by keeping alive the music, the food, and the customs of places that many loved and missed, forged strong bonds of community. Next week ends the present liturgical year as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. It is followed by the first Sunday of Advent in which we begin a new liturgical year. As we bring one liturgy cycle to its conclusion and prepare to start the next, I think it would be good for all of us to think about ways in which we can build up this community of faith. It will happen if we work and pray together. Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, of the angels of God.
gathered as one community, we lift our prayers to God. For the church, may she continue to grow through love and faithful example to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local leaders, may the Holy Spirit inspire them to govern with wisdom and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who suffer discord, may God's mercy work in and through them to bring about healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may the Lord continue to bless our efforts in building the kingdom of God on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are homeless and struggle with addiction, may they find all the help they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, including those enrolled in our Book of Remembrance, may they enjoy the everlasting light of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions on our prayer wall, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, attend to the prayers of your holy people as we watch and wait for your son's return. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Please join in singing hymn number 352, Seed Scattered and Sown. Hymn number 352. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness, through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admission to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
said, says the Lord, for I am God. There is no other, none beside me. I call you. 
we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Our closing hymn is number 209, Beautiful Savior. Hymn number 209. Thank you.